many North Carolinians fall victim to human trafficking. That's why I helped create the first human trafficking court. To help victims and hold traffickers accountable, I will never stop fighting to keep us safe. Good morning. Thank you for everything you're doing. Good morning. I'm going to just let this play just a little bit and then we're going to get started. I know it is five o'clock. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me for Word Empowerment Wednesday. I have truly missed you all. It's, I think it's been two weeks now, and I do apologize. Um, family and doing other things have, have taken my attention at that moment, but it is so good to be back on the line with you this morning. Um, so this morning, I am not going to prolong any longer. We're going to go into the book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 15. The book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse number 15. Um, at your leisure, just go back and just read the entire chapter. Um, there's not many verses in this chapter, but there's so much in it. And I, and I cannot cannot talk about it all today so at your leisure go back and read it so i am going to read this out of the international standard version again this is numbers chapter number 12 verse number 15 and so it says so miriam was isolated outside the camp for seven days and the people didn't travel until miriam was brought in the word that um that kept coming at me was isolated um, this wasn't the original word that the Lord had given me, but just, I think, two days ago, he gave me isolated. So the thought that I want to talk about this morning is who God has blessed, no man can curse. Who God has blessed, no man can curse. So I took the liberty to go to the Bible Dictionary, actually right behind um in the 66 books of the Bible, there's a dictionary right there. So this is where to bless means to make holy or to show favor. To curse simply means it is a prayer or it is a, a desire that evil or injury come upon someone. So in other words, who God has shown favor to, no man can pray or desire to have evil upon them. So that is what we're going to talk about this morning. There is a book by the name, um, The Gifts of Imperfection. And it was written by a lady by the name of Brene Brown. She makes a statement that one of the issues people have is the need to compare themselves with others. And by doing so... It causes emotional damage. So if we'll be honest this morning, this is something that happens quite frequently because the fact that the matter is, is that many tend to neglect or to accept who they are. We're always looking for ways to be better or to be thought of more than, than what we are or you know, or what we are doing. However, when we do these things, it will lead to competition. 
it will lead to conformity and it will end up in a, a place of jealousy. And so as we look at today's world and you, you know, we have what we call social media now, you'll see people posting pictures, you'll see um, their glamorous lifestyle, their promotion, their successful careers. And, and the truth of the matter is everything that we see that's being posted on social media doesn't always have to be true. And we know that because from time to time, people will hack each other's page and they'll pretend to be someone that they're not. <laughs> you know, people will only show you what they want you to know. And a lot of times they want you to think that there's something that they're not. So, you know, we can't... Um, take that as, oh my goodness, I want to be like her. Or I want to be like him. We have to be who we are and who God has called us to be. And so instead of now what happens now many times when, when we see these things, because, you know, if we'll be honest, sometimes we're like, oh, I want to do that. And jealousy creeps in. Competition creeps in. So instead of celebrating them, you begin to compete and compare yourself to them. And so and many times um, people will even become angry or jealous. We know this to be true. Why? Because if we look at King Saul, the issue wasn't that um, of David per se. The issue was he was so angry that the people gave David more accolades than they gave him. And what happens, it led to seeking David. It led to trying to kill David. My God, he had a jealous spirit and he was not going to stop at anything until he had destroyed David. Mm. So now as we look at this, Theodore Roosevelt said this, comparison is a thief of joy. So many people are missing out on what God has for them. Why? Because they spend countless time and hours on social media comparing themselves to others. And it has been said that time spent on social media increases even depression, envy, and, and decreases well-being. And if we'll be honest this morning, how many times have you scroll, scroll through your timeline and something that caused you to get upset? Because we know that everybody that is connected to us as friends on Facebook are not really our friends. <laughs> Most of the time we connect with them because we know them or because they are associated to someone else. But, you know, most of the time we're just we're not just friends we connect we hit that friend button but we're not friends and then you have people that are just on there just to see what someone else is doing <laughs> and so you know nine times out of ten you're gonna find something that's gonna make you say okay upset you and so you become envious because you feel like okay why, why is this person saying this why is this person doing that so I submit to you this morning that, yes, it's good every now and then to, well, more than every now and then, it's good to pull away because that's just stuff. And we cannot compare ourselves to what someone says or what someone um, posts. We compare ourselves to God. We are supposed to be like him, not um, other people, my God. So, as we look at this now, as we look at the text, as you begin to read about Miriam and, and how it starts, she starts now talking about Moses being married to a Cushite. And I've heard so many sermons about this and that and this and that, racism and all of that. That's not what God showed me. She had an underlying issue with her brother. And don't get me wrong because even your family and those that are close to you can become envious of you. Yeah, I said it. Even your family and those close to you can become envious of you. 
Here we find now that Miriam, she is in, instigating a conversation with her brother Aaron. And instead of her saying what she really felt and how she, you know, what she really meant in her heart. Because she only used Moses' marriage now as a scapegoat. And if you wanted to resolve a problem, can I help somebody this morning? We have to be open and we have to be transparent to have a conversation of what really the problem is. Because behind every problem, there is a root. And if we don't cut it from the root, we'll become, my God, like King Saul. We'll become one of those people chasing after someone, slandering their name, and willing, my God, to crucify them by any means necessary. So here we find that Miriam coerced her brother Aaron, Aaron to form an opinion about Moses. And the conversation went like this. Who, really what she was saying was, who does Moses think he is? And she even says in verse 2, so they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? <laughs> has he not spoken through us also? And guess what? The Lord heard it. And let me put a pin right there because I think sometimes we think God does, can't hear. <laughs> but he is God El Shammah. That means he is the God that hears. And yes, he hears every conversation before it's even spoken. This is why the Apostle Paul encourages us to let our speech to be always with grace, seasoned with salt. That we may know how we should answer to every man. Colossians 4 and 6. As believers, we are the salt of the earth. We are the light. And our conversation should reflect and represent God. Paul warns us to have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. They only breed quarrels. And what that means is they only breed arguments. Some things we don't even need to be engaged in. We don't need to be engaged in pettiness and trivial things. Because it's just a waste of energy. So the text says now that God hears Miriam and Aaron. And suddenly, guess what? God calls them to come forth. He calls Moses. He calls Miriam. And he calls Aaron and then he tells them to meet him at the tabernacle of meeting and when they get there God deals with Miriam and Aaron understand that God will deal with his people and he tells Miriam and Aaron that he is God he is the one who sent Moses among them at this time, God is the one that is causing Moses to be the leader. And he even tells them, I chose Moses. Why? Because he has been faithful and he has been humble in his house. God was angry with Miriam and Aaron. And it wasn't that God had anything against Miriam per se. Because listen to this now. Michael sits and forth said this, I brought you up out of the land of Egypt and I have redeemed you out of the house of bondage. I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Moses, and, and I'm sorry, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. So Miriam, how dare you? This is not your time. I did not call you to lead my people. You had your time back in Exodus uh, um, when, when they came out of bondage and you begin to lead the women and lead the people into a praise because God had delivered them. That was your time. This is this is Moses' time. And that is the problem with many people today. We don't know our timing. We don't know our position. We don't honor leadership. But we have to honor those that God has placed, ab oh God, above us. So here we find that Miriam and Aaron, they should have been afraid from the very beginning to even speak against Moses. But guess what? Miriam become petty. 
she became petty and she said look um aaron she even tried and this is what people do too when they're mad with you they will get other people to coerce with them and to be mad with you also you may not even done nothing to any of them you may not even done nothing to that other person but because of the association now what people do they draw each other in <laughs> Yes, we do that. We do that. We draw other people in to be on our side. Oh my God. And so they became petty. They became petty and they became jealous. It wasn't that Moses had married a Cushite woman. The fact of the matter was there was some jealousy there because Miriam felt like the same God that spoke to Moses, he can speak to us too. So who do he think he is? Jealousy crept in. They were jealous because Moses now were receiving the attention and they wanted it for themselves. Remember what I said earlier, how we compare ourselves to other people by what we see and what they, um, um, how they do things. But the fact of the matter is we don't know what these people have went through to get, to get what they got or to get to where they are going. We don't know that. We only see the glamorous, but we don't see the hell behind it. We don't see any of that. So this is why we have to stop comparing ourselves to other people. We are accountable and, and should be open now to even criticism and questioning, but not to engage in pettiness because of what the um what someone has been given, what position they have been given, or what God is doing in their lives. No. And because of this, guess what? God punished Miriam. He made her to become leprous, white as snow. Because of this, she was placed in isolation. Understand that God will deal with us at times by allowing us to be isolated. God allowed Miriam to reflect on what she had done. And so now, as this, as this is happening, Aaron not knowing what to do, he began to cry out to Moses. And as he cried out to Moses, he is considering Moses now to be his leader, to help him and his sister. He began to repent and to acknowledge his wrong. Won't God do it? <laughs> as, 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 as we like to say, God will make your enemies your footstool. Now he's crying out for help. And Moses in turn, he didn't retaliate. He didn't become bitter. He didn't treat Aaron any different. But guess what? He began to pray and cry to the Lord. My God. We have to do as Moses done concerning his brother and sister. We have got to cry out to the Lord and pray for those who, dis who despitefully mistreat us and hurt us and slander our name and be mean and vicious to us. We can't act like they act. We, we got to be accountable for ourselves. I said this uh, um, maybe last week in a post. We got to be accountable for ourselves, for our action. We can't treat people like they treat us. We got to treat them as, as godly as possible. We got to treat them with love and compassion as God has done towards us. We cannot afford to treat people in this season like they treat us. I don't care if they save or uh, 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 unsaved. We got to learn how to treat them with love and compassion. And so Moses began to cry out to God. He said, if her father, he began to cry out to God and pray for them. And God tells Moses, and this is what Moses, uh, God replied to Moses was, if her father has spit in her face, will she not be shamed seven days? So God said, no, no, no. She's got to be, uh, um, she's got to be isolated. She's got to learn. So let her be shut up out of the camp for seven days. And afterwards, she will, she may be received again. So God put her out the camp for seven days. And the people did not continue their journey until Miriam returned. And we hear nothing more about Miriam till we go all the way over to Numbers chapter 20. And, that's, and guess what that says? It says Miriam died. 
there are consequences when we become petty, when we compare ourselves to others, when we slander their name, when we are jealous, because that jealous spirit now, it holds a lot of nastiness in our hearts that are not pleasing to God. And understand this morning that the same God that blessed Susie or Johnny is the same God that can bless you. But who God has blessed, no one can curse. Our blessings and our cursing come from God. And we got to understand that God is sovereign. I'm sorry, Miriam. You, you were put in the leadership with Moses, but Moses was a chosen leader for the people. So don't get it twisted and don't start hating on him. That's your brother. <laughs> My God, don't, don't think your brother is better than you. No, at this time, God had chosen Moses because he was faithful and he is humble. Your season, your time is coming. Don't get, you know, upset because, you know, you have to sit around and be taught. <laughs> My God, that's the problem too. You, you, many don't like to be taught. They don't want to sit under no one. We got too many, as I was growing up, the word was, we got too many um, chiefs and not enough Indians. Listen. God wants to bless each and every one of us. We just got to know our timing and our season. We got to learn how to be obedient to authority, those that rule over us. And if you are in Christ, let me say this, you are the blessed of the Lord. And what God is blessed, no one can curse. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We give you glory and we give you praise. We thank you for this word this morning, God. We realize this word didn't make us jump through hoops. It didn't cause us to uh, scream and holler. It didn't cause us to turn cartwheels. But God, we thank you because you are teaching us to be humble. You are teaching us to have a heart of humility and to be submissive under authority. God, I pray this morning that this word would not fall on deaf ears that it would not fall on on rocky soil but god it would take root and that it would grow god help us not to compare ourselves to others help us oh god to realize that we are blessed and what you have blessed can no man curse so god i pray this morning that we will be the people of god that you're coming back for in these last days god i pray lord god that we will be so mindful of how we say things that even our very thoughts because god knew what miriam was thinking he knew what miriam had said and even the bible tells us that you heard her god you heard what she said and let us be mindful that you are El Shammah. You are the God that hears. Mm. You hears everything. So God, I pray, Lord, that we will be the salt of the earth, that we will be the light of the earth, that we'll be so mindful and careful because people are dying. Mm. People are dying by the seconds and somebody needs to know who you are. And God, we don't want the blood to be on our hands. God, we don't want, oh God, to lead anyone astray. But God, we want to lead them to you. So God, we thank you now. We bless you and we honor you. And God, before we even close this prayer, God, we pray for the families in Texas. We lift them up to you, God. God, we lift them up to you. God, we lift them up to you, God. We pray for the 20 people that lives have been taken senselessly, God. We pray, oh God, against every copycat spirit. We come against it now. God, we come against, oh God, the plot and scheme of the enemy. And God, I pray, oh God, that we don't stop praying, but God, that we will continue Continue to pray without ceasing because we're living in a time that we cannot afford. Mm. 
We cannot afford not to pray. And God, you told us to pray without ceasing. And men ought to always pray and faint not. So God, we pray, Lord, in this season that your people will come together. That this would not be just something that happened this week and not and forgotten about next week. God, that we will be consistent. That we will be consistent in prayer. That we will be consistent in our fasting. That we will be consistent reading our word. God, I pray in this season, Lord, that we, Father, will be mindful. And to know that you're coming back again. You're coming back again. And we don't want to miss heaven over technicalities. We don't want to miss heaven over being petty, being jealous, being being malicious, to being having strife in our hearts, being competitive, God pride. We don't want to miss heaven for those things. For any nasty thing, even evilness, God, we do not want to miss heaven. So, God, we thank you now. God, we seal this word. We seal this prayer by the blood of Jesus. And, God, we pray now, Father. Oh, God, it gets the spirit of retaliation to lay our media. And, God, we thank you. God, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen and amen, amen. Listen, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me for Word Empowerment Wednesday. And if the Lord says the same, join us on Monday night for Bible study. We have been having a phenomenal, a phenomenal time in the Lord. Um, if you know anything about me, I love the Word of God. I love the word of God. And so we have been coming together collectively and we have been teaching, <coughs> excuse me, together, together. That's right. We have been learning together. And so please join us on Monday night at 8 p.m. by way of conference call. And we are in the book of the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6. Um, then if the Lord says the same, please join us back here on Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. for Word Empowerment Wednesday. And then tonight, every Wednesday night, every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock p.m., the time has changed. So please tell your friends and your loved ones or even your neighbor, your enemies, whoever, to join us back on a conference call at 8 p.m. for prayer. Listen, listen, that is something that I will not ever stop doing, and that is praying. So join us back for prayer. We have so much to pray for. My God, so much to pray for. It seems like the list gets long and longer and longer. So we have so much to pray for, and we have so much to give God thanks for. He is worthy of our thanks. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy of all the glory. So with all of that being said, as I always let you know that something great is going to happen for us, and you may ask, how do you know that? And I tell you this every single Wednesday morning. I know this because we serve a great and mighty God. We serve a mighty God in spite of the chaos, in spite of everything that is going on around us. We serve a great God. He is still great. He is still sitting on the throne. He sees everything. He knows everything. We deserve, oh God, to give him all the glory, the honor, and the worship. We deserve to give him all the praise. He is great. He is great. So we just thank him and we bless him. And I say to you, have a blessed and wonderful day. And know that you are blessed of the Lord. What God has blessed can no man curse. No man. No man. God bless you.